Welcome to Getting Good at Warframe Part 12. Uh, this time we will be covering the star chart, um, what the star chart is, uh, what the junctions are, how alerts work, how invasions work, how void fissures work, and how sorte missions work. Um, first off, the star chart is accessible in your orbiter under navigation. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody will already know this because you kind of need to figure that out in order to get through the tutorial of the game. Uh, the junctions are located on each planet uh, and are at the points where you connect to other planets. If you activate a junction, it makes it to where you can move on to the next planet on the star chart. Uh, but if the junction isn't activated, you can't transfer to the other planet. Um, there is an exception to this for longtime players such as me. Uh, my star chart was basically already fully explored when they added the junctions. So while I haven't gone back to fight uh, any of these bosses uh, since they added the junctions, uh, or necessarily fulfilled the conditions for the junction to unlock, I basically already have the planet on the other side of it fully explored, so they didn't lock the planet for me. But for new players, you will have to unlock the junctions in order to proceed. Um, and so they're pretty critical to expanding the star map. Uh, each junction will open a new planet, and in addition to that, each junction will give you a set of rewards. Uh, for instance, the Venus Junction gives you uh, the Taxion Sentinel Blueprint, uh, which is really good. Uh, it saves you a lot of credits of having to buy it from the uh, marketplace. So I definitely recommend activating that one. Uh, conveniently, it's very easy to activate, so it shouldn't be that much issue. Uh, I believe Venus is supposed to be the first one you activate. Um, uh, some of the junctions award quests, uh, so you will need to activate them to unlock the quest lines. Uh, so basically, each time you go to a planet, you'll want to check where the junctions are and what their requirements are. So you can work towards those conditions to get to the next planet. Uh, alerts can be found under this uh, exclamation point icon. Uh, these are time-limited missions. Um, they're not like super limited uh, in that it's not a mission node that just suddenly appears. Uh, but they're alternate missions on another mission node that have specific rewards that you're told what you will get before you go. Um, so if I run this mission, I will get Speed Holster. Um, assuming that I can succeed in the mission. Um, so keeping an eye on alerts is pretty important. Because every now and then, a Orican Catalyst or an Orican Reactor will be on alert. Uh, and when that happens, you definitely want it. Um, there are other things that come through on the alerts that are worth getting, such as some exotic resources. Uh, and even Endo can be a pretty good thing to run out and get. If it's not going to be that hard to clear the mission, getting 100 Endo is basically the equivalent of like 20 mods I want to say um, assuming you're melting down common mods that are worth only 5 into a piece uh, so it's, it's beneficial to keep an eye on the alerts in order to actually go to an alert you will have to have the mission node unlocked uh, you'll note that this one says it's locked it's on one of the very few nodes that I have not previously played and do not have access to. Uh, 
So it says it's on Salius Uranus. Uh, so... Yeah, if I had beaten this node, this node would have unlocked and I could have done it. But because I never got around to playing this node, I cannot go there. Um, and this is one of the things where uh, they they remapped the star map uh, since I explored the star map. Uh, and this is an inopportune placement of one of the previous nodes that wasn't particularly important. Um, because I already have access to this node, so I know that this wasn't blocking it prior. But uh, I'll just have to go unlock that uh, at some point. Uh, ideally, you explore your star chart enough that you don't ever see any alerts that you couldn't choose to run. Uh, because if there's ever, if there's ever like a really good alert and you come on and there's five minutes left on the alert, uh, you want to be able to just real quick join in on a mission on that and get that reward. Uh, and if you have to go unlock a couple nodes to get to it, uh, and you only have a couple minutes to get in, uh, you can miss out on some pretty good rewards that way. Uh, so, uh, expanding your star map uh, is one of the highest priorities in the game. Uh, invasions uh, can be found by clicking this fist icon. Uh, there are two different well, I guess there are three types of invasions. Uh, there's Corpus versus Grenier. There's anyone versus the Infested. And there are the Fremordian Fleets and Razorback Armadas. Um, they are technically listed under Invasion. Uh, though it only tells you their construction status. It doesn't really tell you like where they are or any of that. Um, so, on the invasions, uh, they're listed by planet, um, and if you hover over the planet, it will expand out to show you everything that's on that planet. Uh, invasion missions are the best place to get the exotic resources, detonite injectors, and field run. Um, you can craft those yourself, but it's a pain to craft them, uh, and it's clan tech, and they're just so much easier to earn through invasions that it's not worth crafting them. Um, there are also some specific rewards that are only available through invasions, uh, such as some blueprints for rarer weapons. Uh, so it's definitely worth checking every now and then. And very, very rarely there will be a reactor or a catalyst on an invasion mission. So it's worth keeping an eye out for that as well. Um, the way invasions work is if you go to an invasion node, um, which is marked with that fist. Uh, you can choose new alert marked on navigation tenno to uh, participate in the regular mission or the offensive. Uh, so you pick the offensive if you want to do the invasion, and then you get to pick which side you support. In order to receive the reward, you have to run the mission three times for the same faction. Uh, so if you wanted the field run, you'd have to support the Corpus, and you'd have to support them three times. You'd have to run the mission three times, um, and you can't support both to get both rewards. You have to pick between the two of them. Uh, then, once you have uh, done your three missions, nothing will happen. You won't get the reward. Uh, you only get the reward when the conflict ends, which might be almost instantly afterwards you finished, or could be a couple days after you finished making the run. 
Uh, it depends on how many other people are participating in the invasion. Um, you'll note the invasions have percentages. Uh, when one faction reaches 100%, or a certain amount of time passes, the invasion ends, and then the rewards are distributed. And it might take a couple days if there aren't a whole lot of players playing. Um, uh, I've seen that happen, where I've run out on a mission uh, and nobody else was interested, and it just kind of sat around for a while. Uh, but you can just kind of do it and then just leave it. It's not a big deal. The reward will come. Uh, you'll get a message in your inbox eventually with your reward. Uh, I have never run an invasion and not gotten the reward. If you do it the three times, you will get the reward once it ends, which can take frustratingly long. Um, so I recommend keeping an eye out on those. They're, they got some good rewards, um, and they, they aren't as in your face about the rewards as the alerts. Uh, the alerts have uh, a huge display that just tells you everything that's on alert right now before you even open your uh, navigation. But the, the invasions don't do that. You will have to check them yourself. Um, so void fissures can be found under this icon. I briefly touched on them when I was explaining the uh, relics, but I'll cover them again as they're part of the star chart. Uh, the void fissures move. Um, they're like alerts, they're only there for a certain amount of time, and then they move to a new location. Uh, so it's important if you, if you want to do a void fissure, just click this icon and expand it out and see where they are currently, because it's not worth trying to find them on your star map. Uh, then pick what type of fissure you want to do based on what kind of relic you want to open, and select it. It'll take you over to the correct node. You select which relic you'd like to open, uh, or you can choose to play without a relic. I advise against doing this. If you do not have a relic equipped, you will not receive a reward. Um, even if your uh, allies you're playing with bring relics, uh, you cannot receive a reward if you did not bring a relic. Um, so always bring a relic. Uh, it increases everyone's potential of getting better stuff the more people who bring relics. And you're not really getting any reward unless you bring a relic. So I recommend always bringing a relic. Um, then... Uh, Sorte missions can be found under this icon. They do not appear on the star map at all. Uh, it's, it's only accessible through this icon. Uh, I can tell you understand what an honor this will be to have your tiny neck snapped by the Kayla de Thame. That's why you're so eager. I can appreciate that, and so does my audience. So, the Sorte missions are high-level content. Uh... In order to get the reward from the reward pool, you have to complete all three missions. Uh, my recommendation is playing the Sorte missions in public or with a team that you recruited yourself. I don't recommend Sorte missions for solo. They are technically soloable if you're really, really good and have really good equipment, but they are hard. Um, each Sorte mission will have a condition, uh, as well as an increasing level. So for the first mission, um, for today, it's level 50 to 60, it's exterminate, and it's melee only. You can only bring melee weapons with you to this mission. Uh, you can't have a gun with you. It's not even a matter of using a gun. It's like you just can't have it. You have to remove it from your loadout in order to join the mission. Uh, 
The second mission jumps up from 50 to 60, all the way up to 65 to level A. Um, in this case, it is survival and radiation hazard. Uh, so you'll be hit with a lot of radiation procs. Um, and then uh, the third mission is level 80 to level 100. Uh, it's currently rescue with augmented enemy armor, which is to say enemies are going to be even tankier than normal. It's going to be very hard to do damage to enemies. Um, combined with their level 100 stat, uh, this is going to make killing enemies ridiculously difficult, um, and in most cases just not even worth it. Uh, so good crowd control is probably going to be your key to success here. Um, so that's how the sorties work. Uh, you have to complete all three missions in order to get your reward, but you have to complete them in order. So you have to clear mission one in order to get access to mission two, which you have to clear in order to get access to mission three. And they're an increasing difficulty. So what will usually happen is if you start with a team uh, on the first mission, you will want to keep that same team through the second and the third mission. If you drop out of your team from the first mission, and you go to the second mission and try to just join on randoms, uh, you might have a hard time with that because people who cleared the first team, like cleared the first mission with their team, will probably want to keep their same team. So there aren't going to be a bunch of random players just waiting for a team. Uh, and that lack of random players who are just waiting for a team for the second mission makes it very, very hard to get matched up with another competent team if you drop out of one. Uh, so it's important that everybody looks at what the conditions are for all of the uh, missions uh, and then uh, just runs to the arsenal and makes the appropriate changes between missions uh, to keep things going smoothly. Um, and commuting, well, communicating with your teammates between missions is uh, very beneficial. If you need time to swap out for a different weapon or something, uh, posting in your squad chat that you're just going to swap gear real quick uh, makes everyone else's weight a lot more bearable because they know you didn't just wander off and leave your computer running. They know you're doing something and you'll be back in just a sec. Um, the only time you might actually be better off jumping out of a team and doing it solo, in my opinion, is spy missions. Uh, spy missions can be really, really annoying in uh, sorties. Because one person not knowing how to properly run a spy mission can set off the alarm and cause a data purge and cause you to fail. Um, and if you're good at spy missions, it might just be faster to drop out of the team, do it solo, and then go into the next, uh, the next mission. Uh, if you don't know how to do a spy mission and you want to clear the sortes, my advice is don't, don't try to help at all. Uh, if you don't know how to do a spy mission, just hide from the enemies as best you can um, and don't go anywhere near the uh, vaults because you don't want to start a data purge. Um, if you're good at the spy missions, then you can help. If you, if you don't know how to do a spy mission, just try not to get in the way. Uh, it's, it's much better to have somebody who's essentially AFK on a spy mission than it is to have somebody who sets off the alarm and causes a mission failure. Uh, so 
you know, the, the spy missions can be very frustrating um, when somebody uh, takes a rhino and just charges through a horde of enemies and suddenly uh, the data is getting purged. Um, it doesn't matter how good your Warframe is at killing everything, if you get detected and the data gets purged, everybody will be mad at you. Um, maybe not mad at you specifically because they won't necessarily know you're the one who caused it, but they'll be mad that the mission failed. Um, and that basically covers the star chart. Uh, the star chart is basically how you select what mission you want to do. You'll interact with it every time you play the game, unless you just hang out on chat um, and don't run missions. But anytime you want to run a mission, you're going to have to come here. Uh, unless you're just joining in on friends, in which case they might theoretically do the star chart management for you. Um, but, uh, yep, yeah, that's star chart. That's basically everything you need to know about it. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next video.